Hello gang, Sharpshot21 here, and we're back on the mini. Time for doing a little bit of last minute cleanup. Uh, just finishing getting everything tidied. Next video, the engine will be in, and it will be one more thing that went wrong at the same time. So I figured I'd include it in this series because it's not going to be one of your usual um, type of maintenance types. So it wasn't going to go in the mini maintenance series, which we'll pick up after this. Uh, for what's going on right now, it's going to be a little bit of everything. I'm working on pulling off the timing set tool just so that I can start to turn the engine over and can finally make sure that everything's going to work the way it's supposed to before I put the valve cover on and actually spin it over with the starter because if you don't check it now, you're going to regret it. Uh, and there's enough oil still in the engine and in the cylinders that it's not a problem to spin it once or twice before oil or pressure builds up. That's not going to hurt anything. You do this at the same time you do an oil change or anything of that nature. Heck, even when you start the car in the morning, you still spin it over a few times before oil pressure starts. Uh, I believe right now I am working on the turbo support bracket, maybe the lower turbo lines. Uh, looks like, yeah, we're fiddling with either exhaust bolts or that oil feed line. Oh, uh, I'm having to cock the... That's what it is. So the cold side volute needed some adjustment. And so that had to come back off. You can take the cold side off and the hot side off with it still on the car. Um, so what you do when that happens is you separate the whole cassette. So there, I just took the whole cassette off. And now it's going to go back in because I had something misaligned there. Easy enough to get it misaligned, easy enough to fix it, especially while it's out of the car. A little bit harder to do while it's in the car, but still not bad. It is not a hard thing to um, fix. And if you're doing it on the bench like I was, it is kind of tricky to get everything aligned. And it's just held on by a few bolts. Torquing them down in this position is the hardest thing to do. Easiest to just do it by feel, but you can do it with a torque wrench. It is not that big a deal. Um, and then right now, I'm pulling spark plugs out. I just set them in the head so that debris couldn't fall in. They were not torqued in. Um, and this is just going to be so I can check cylinder position and, as I said, spin it over by hand as needed, um, just in case, and for remounting the transmission, because you do have to spin this thing to bolt the transmission to the flywheel. Uh, you'll have to do that whether it's a manual or an automatic like this one. That's just kind of part for the course uh, with, with any type of engine. If you're going to split them, you have to spin them. If you're going to mate them, you have to spin them. So, here we go. Quick check. Okay. Everything spun. Just dropping some wires all the same length down in there. They're very hard to see. But, the two brown ones and are going at the same space and then the red one is also going the same way. They are, do get tight but they do turn over. That is expected. So we will keep going there. Pull 
pulling the wires back out. It's a handy trick with this engine. If you get four wires the exact same length, I think I cut mine about two and a half feet long because they need to stick down through the head and then go and sit on the top of the pistons and you need to be able to have them still sticking out of the head when the pistons are all the way down. All right, now we're finishing aligning the turbo. Plop the valve cover back on, just to keep debris out of the head, because there are sensitive components in there. You don't want to get grit and dust and dirt on the camshaft, especially on the lobes. That is not healthy for the engine. Put a cover on it. It's going to save you a world of hurt. back on the bench. I think there's an alignment pin that I had missing or something to that sort. I don't remember exactly what it was, why I kept having to take the turbo off. Um, I lost... I was trying to use a microphone on this one. I've totally lost audio too, so I can't even check the audio to see what I was trying to do. Um, but yeah, the... Turbo is back off. Got the valve cover back off. I think I left that off so you could see. Um, one thing I'll note that I didn't change on this that could come back to bite me, hasn't yet, um, but, and it shouldn't if you're careful on how you take it apart, um, but that external water tube there that runs from the thermostat housing into the water pump if you're this far in, you should replace it. I didn't realize that was an item one should replace when I was doing this. Um, I didn't find out about that until after I was already back together and full of coolant and didn't feel like draining and refilling the system. Um, so, you can get to it from the back. It's a little tricky with the... Uh, intake and the exhaust in, but it is doable. If I need to, I can get to it that way. Um, okay, I think we've got the intake back on, or the, the cold side of the turbo and the cassette back in. And it looks like, yes, we're bolting that back up. So that should be back on now for the last little bit, or for the last bit. Um, and then there will be fitting up that last oil feed connection with the banjo bolt up at the top. You can see that fitting floating there. And yeah, that looks like torquing down the support bolt. quite sure. I think my brother was talking to me about something there. I'm not cutting these. I'm just changing the speed on them. Um, so we're going to get moments like that. Alright, now we're flipping her over so we can show you a little bit. Okay, so this is for the clamp on that uh, oil return line, because once you've got that feed line, or the return line in the bottom of the turbo, 
you do not want to take it apart. And yeah, we jumped to putting it back on because the camera died, I think. Let's break clean out. Cleaning up the top banjo, I think. I think I also had to order the banjo washers for this uh, just because I lost them. Um, losing them happens. You can buy them. They're not terribly expensive. Get a 10 pack. You're going to need a couple. Hopefully you don't need them for anything else ever again, but if you do, you've got them. Well worth it. Uh, they are an oddball size banjo. Because of course they are. We keep a stash of common size banjos around, banjo washers around, and these weren't it. Okay, so... The um, line is going to go... You want it to kind of go straight up as much as possible. Um, that is a little tricky to accomplish when you torque it down. You can make it happen. Um, and you want to make sure all these connections are tight. They do not need Teflon tape. They do not need thread sealer. They are self-sealing threads. Crank them down hard. Don't go nuts, but crank them down hard and you won't have any issues. And there's the banjo tight. I think we're gonna move around to the back side here shortly. So we can start on putting the, excuse me, the fuel pump, the fuel rail, and the vacuum pump on those I want back in before we got the engine back on. Mm, not sure what I'm tightening there. might have just been the bolts that hold that timing chain guide on because I might not have torqued them down before and that is a little piece of thermal insulation heat shielding that was on the previous oil feed line might as well slip it back on it was there for a reason it does get quite hot That is that piece I'm holding is the dipstick tube adapter um, because part of the dipstick tube is built into the block and the timing chain guide on the front of the block and then that little bit is just what holds the last four inches of the dipstick and the handle so you can get to it. Uh, if you've taken that out do not forget to put that back in you will be spraying oil all over the place. Just a fit with an o-ring and one bolt that holds it on. And from there, we'll see what happens. Yep, all right, now we're moving on to the back side of the engine. Or the transmission side, I guess, because the side facing us is towards the back of the car. Anyways, there's two holes that go through into the camshafts. One is for the vacuum pump and one is for the high pressure fuel pump. The front one is the vacuum pump and the rear one is the high pressure fuel pump. Because this is a boosted car, you do not have a standard uh, manifold vacuum like you would on a non-boosted car or an old uh, carbureted car. Though even carbureted cars when boosted do not have manifold vacuum. What this means is that you can't use the intake manifold 
to create the vacuum for things like your uh, brake booster in this case. I think the brake booster is the only thing that needs a vacuum. Maybe the wastegate needs a vacuum, but I think that's electronic. Um, so you need, no, wastegate's vacuum actuated. So you need a vacuum pump for those two systems. Um, so that's the front of the engine or the side with the turbo. That hole takes the vacuum pump. And then the back side, the side nearest us, is what takes the high pressure fuel pump, which is what I've got in my hand right now. When you're installing this, there is a cross bolt type of arrangement that slips into a milled channel on the cam. You need to make sure that gets aligned before you start to tighten everything down. Make sure your mating surfaces are clean and then gently tighten things down. Once you've got it all snugged up, then you can target the spec. Spec is in the manual, which you really need the manual for this thing. I know I've said it before, I'll say it again. Go get the manual. Whoop. This engine with the head on it is a little top heavy when you gotta roll it over. Caught me a little off guard there. Not a big deal. Was able to catch it and it was fine. So the next step is fuel rail. I'm gonna think. Maybe not. I don't know. We'll find out here. Ah, uh, yeah. No, it's gonna be intake and fuel rail. You want to vacuum out the intake ports one last time and the fuel injector ports one last time. You gotta make sure all those things are clean before you start to put stuff in. I believe here I'm just cleaning up fasteners again. Uh, might as well make sure everything is clean. Oh no, I'm cleaning injectors. No? Maybe that was the Veno solenoid. And here I'm taking the bolts out of the water pump uh, boss. Because I, while I was in here, hey, might as well do the water pump. Water pump on these cars has a polymer impeller. I don't trust polymer impellers, especially due to the fact that the ones on these cars are known to fail. So I bought a water pump with a metal impeller. I think it's a steel one. Might be an alloy of some type. And that's what's going in here shortly. Um, and at 80,000 plus miles, it's time for a water pump anyways. They don't last much past that. So I figured a little bit of prevention was well worth it. So you might as well just do it while you're there. Water pump you can probably do with it in the car, but it's a pain. So while it's out, do it. Unless, of course, you've had it done before. Um, I think I'm putting valve cover bolts in their homes just so I can start to eliminate some of the bolts that I have floating around, and then we'll get into the water pump. I was a little bit scatterbrained trying to get everything together on this car. Um, yeah, we're gonna move position just a tad. And it would appear. 
here. That's the bolt for the vanos that I'm tightening up. That does want to be torqued in there pretty good. If that bolt comes out and the vanos is allowed to pop out, you will dump oil all over the place. Not something you want. Um, so make sure that bolt's up tight. Let's see. Um, if I had to do this again, would I do things differently? Eh, probably not. Um, at least not at this stage of the game. As I remember it, everything went fairly smoothly. Ah, yes, there's a bolt that holds that end of the water tube on. Don't forget that if you did take it out. I don't think I'd do anything differently. I don't think I'd go about this a different way. Um, dropping it out was certainly easiest. It can be done without putting the front in service position, which is so much nicer than having to put it in service position, pull it out the top, and have to disconnect your AC system. Um, I think at this point I'm just checking to make sure I've got all the fasteners where they're supposed to be. I don't remember having any leftover fasteners on this thing. Okay, I had to skip a bit. I think cameras died. So now the vacuum pump is on and I'm attaching the water lines to the turbo uh, for the water feed and return and if you look closely there is a new water pump on the front of the motor um, that was it, it's not hard to do just make sure you get the seal wet when you put it on it's not going to seal dry uh, I was using glycerin for pretty much all the seals like that water pump seal, valve cover seal only thing I didn't put it on was the turbo oil line seal, which I probably should have. Yeah, and it looks like we're also finishing up with the bolts for the vacuum pump. Yeah, I believe they're E-type torques. Same with the ones on the high-pressure fuel pump. Definitely want to make sure they're replaced. Vacuum pumps on these cars, in addition to being important for stopping, should also be replaced as a wear item, because how they're designed and how they drive the vacuum pump is the same type of shaft and drive key arrangement as the high-pressure fuel pump. What happens on the vacuum pump is the vacuum pumps can seize. If something plugs the little oiling hole, if they seize, they will snap a camshaft, or they will halt a camshaft and the rest of the motor will continue to turn. That's going to be a problem because that's going to make you jump time. So a bad vacuum pump will launch your engine. I recommend a replacement on those short of 100,000 probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 80. High pressure fuel pumps are the same danger. I'm going to do mine here shortly, probably. I'll do a quick walkthrough on that one. They're not hard, they're just kind of a pain. Uh, I think at this point I'm just cleaning fasteners and banjo bolts. Because um, you'll need, again, that's the other place you need banjo washers, is the water feed and return lines. Those going with the banjo bolt, each side of that bolt will need one washer. So I think I'm just cleaning up all those parts. Again, I was being a little OCD about it, but 
I'd rather have everything go back together clean and not gall any threads. I'm uh, not sure what piece I'm working on there. Looks like it's the water pump drive mechanism. Though I could be mistaken. The water pump drive on these is rather interesting. Um, the water pump is not driven by the accessory drive belt, and it is not driven by its own belt. How they decided to drive it is you wrap the accessory drive belt around the crankshaft pulley, and you run it up and over the top of the alternator pulley, and around the AC pulley and a tensioner, spring loaded tensioner. The tensioner keeps that whole side of it taut. There's kind of this spring loaded drive wheel that then runs on the back side of the serpentine belt, pressed up against the serpentine belt as it wraps around the crank pulley, or the accessory belt as it wraps around the crank pulley and the smooth pulley on the water pump. Now, this is kind of convoluted. It isn't all that great. There is one potential advantage for it. Should you lose your accessory drive, and in turn you'll lose your AC, and you lose your alternator, so you won't be charging. So if the battery light comes on, you need to stop and make sure that the belt is still there um, and just that the alternator has failed. And you'll get a little bit of driving out of your car with the alternator fail, but not much. Excuse me. But in theory, the water pump will still drive unless that pulley gets taken out or that drive wheel gets taken out by the failed accessory belt as it makes its exit. Um, but I could see that being an advantage over one that's on the accessory system. Just something to think about. It's not that difficult to change an accessory belt on this car. There's a little pull handle that you can reach from the bottom that will extend the drive gear for the water pump, or the drive pulley for the water pump, and then you get on the spring loaded tensioner from the top. It does take a special tool or a couple of crowbars and some leverage points and removing a headlight. And you can get the accessory drive belt off. Not something I recommend doing that way. I recommend going to get the tool, but I didn't feel like dropping the 50 bucks for the tool. Next time I have to do a serpentine belt or an accessory belt on this thing, I will. Um, and the, the accessory interval on these is fairly frequently, just because it's such a short belt. I think it's like 30,000 miles. Um, so about every three years. Uh, every two oil changes if you're doing it by the mini interval, which you should never do your oil changes by the mini interval. That interval at 15,000 miles is significantly too long for a turbo car. Those intervals should be about 7,500 miles on full synthetic oil at the most. So, use your judgment. I recommend shorter change intervals on this. Uh, checking something, not sure what. Ah. Uh, Okay, that thing I was working on was the front motor mount uh, sub-bracket. The motor mounts on this car, at least on the front, are a multi-piece assembly. The one on the transmission is a single-piece assembly, but the, on this one there's like the engine hanger piece, the motor mount, and then the frame piece. 
usually they're at least they're a two-piece mount with a bracket on one and the mount and bushing on another not so much for this one um, you do have to take that whole bracket off to get the engine to drop down now you then need to overlift the engine to put that bracket back on and then set it back down on the motor mount itself um, not terribly difficult to do fairly easy if you've got the subframe off and you can get a jack with a couple of two by fours or a nice rubber pad on it excuse me so we'll give that a cleaning because that's kind of dirty and spritz down with some brake clean to cut the grease again cleanliness is good you can go as nuts or as not as you want this being my first engine rebuild I went a little nuts I might not do that again and again I might I wanted to paint this thing so if I'm going to paint it then it needs a full strip down and a hot tank dip and then a rebuild and painting it is totally your prerogative it is your engine when I did the Jeep engine, I made sure that it got painted, the block and the head, and that's that. Okay, so I am never seizing these bolts. Never seize is your friend. The one place it is not your friend, actually there's two, is anywhere that you can get never seize into the oil or anywhere that you can get never sees into the water jacket cooling system. If you get it in either of those two places, you're not going to have a good time. What never sees is is a suspension of metallic particles in grease and its sole function is to make sure that when you put a fastener in, if it corrodes or attempts to corrode, you can still get it back out. If you don't like the stuff, that's fine, but you should still use it anyways. It is well worth it. Embrace the Tin Man. It will save you, especially if you're in a place where they use salt on the roads or in harsh climates like that. If you're not in harsh climates, it's not as necessary, but it is still useful to have. Yes, I know I'm putting this on, and I said you have to take it off in order to get it out. You have to take it off to get it out. I just didn't want it going anywhere. Um, and I think we're getting near the end. Yep, time for a valve cover. Now, what I'm doing here is I found where all the bolts go, and now I'm just dropping them into the valve cover. This is a new valve cover. It's an aftermarket one. Um, and then one thing I did do on this, I think it's in the mini maintenance series, is the, um, yes, I put a catch can on this. I'm probably going to put a second one if I can't get my emissions light to go out. Um, but we'll cover that in a mini maintenance video. But plop that down, run the bolts down, and then I did buy two new coils for this and I was running two old coils I'll need to get two new ones to bring them all up to four new ones here shortly but at this point it's ready to go back in the car um, it's easiest to go back in without the down tube on the exhaust and without the intake but thanks for tuning in thanks for watching we'll catch you next time sharps out Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. It really helps me out and it lets you know when I put something new up. New videos will be going up on Tuesdays or Thursdays at 8 a.m. Eastern. And if I do decide to do live streams, I will try to give 24 hours notice. So hit the subscribe button on the channel and you'll be notified when I post that stuff too. Hope to see you next time. Sharps out.